what's up youtube fam this is your girl mrs tony two times and we back with another video let's hear from tonight's sponsor and then we'll jump right into it this video is brought to you by cool green clothing what's up kings and queens it's your girl Shardell Moore. as always we give thanks for another day you dig so as the ceo and founder of motivational more we take pride in working with incredible creative entrepreneurs and today we are shooting a campaign for cool green clothing founded by the one and only ac green so the vibrational energy of this line is all about street vibes a growth mindset hustle so today we are highlighting this guys the baltimore cool green snapback ah! How cute is this? Look at this. <laughs> so we're going to have so much fun on this shoot. And I'm telling you, follow Cool Green Clothing. It's so important for us to support our entrepreneurs. There's so much talent in Baltimore. And as a creative entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it is. And I love to see just people going out there and going for their dreams. So let's get it. Bless up. What's up, Two Times fam? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Baltimore Way. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to join the Two Times family. Tap that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to get notified of all uploads. Be sure to like this video if you're rocking with the content. Comment down below and share your thoughts. Of course, always keeping it respectful. Feel free to share this video. Make sure you watch until the end to hear the full story. In this episode, we will be talking about a terrible story of how a young mother and her son lost their lives because of someone she once called a friend. Let's get right into it. 31-year-old Jennifer lived with her 7-year-old son on the 100 block of Up Manor Road in the quiet block of row houses in Southwest Baltimore Uplands neighborhood. Jennifer was a devoted mother who loved her son. Jennifer was working on her nursing certificate and had plans to work in the healthcare field. She was described as fun and bubbly by her sister. Jennifer's son was also gifted and attended Baltimore International Academy, the Language Immersion Charter School in Anthonyville, where he was in second grade. He was in the Chinese program. Those who knew the seven-year-old described him as a gentle soul and always smiling. On Thursday morning, May 28, 2015, at 8.20, police responded to a shooting call at the home of Jennifer and her son. A neighbor found it odd that she didn't see Jennifer and her young son leaving for school that morning, so she decided to call Jennifer's family members. Friends and families of the mother and son began to arrive at the taped off crime scene. When one man asked and found out who had been killed, he demanded, tell me you're lying. Sadly, Jennifer and her son had been found shot in their home, both deceased at the scene. Family members and city officials urged people to come forward if they had any information about who could have done this. City councilman at the time, Brandon Scott, said that the person responsible was a coward. As the investigation continued, a family member of Jennifer and her son said that they believed the little boy was slain because he could identify his mother's attacker. Police also believed that a friend or associate had vital information to the case, even if they weren't directly responsible for pulling the trigger. Seven months after the incident, family members were frustrated that no one had come forward. They were uneasy that the perpetrator was still out there. They considered Jennifer may have been a target for robbery. They collected donations in hopes to give a reward for anything that would lead to an arrest. Four years went by and still no arrests had been made in Jennifer's and her son's case. According to BPD, any leads that did come in led nowhere and they were still unaware of a motive. According to reports, officials suggested to the victim's family that they had some suspects in sight and the case was still open. However, with no leads or arrests, the victim's family had started to believe that the case had gone cold, not knowing why or what happened only stalled the grieving process for the grief-stricken family. 
Almost a year later in September 2020, federal prosecutors brought charges against a man named Andre. The Fed said Andre carried out the hit on Jennifer and her young son, allegedly. However, according to reports, Andre had assistance in executing his terrible deed. In June 2021, a woman named Kiera, 36, was charged and became Andre's co-defendant. She was arrested in Texas. She pleaded guilty to her charges in November 2021 and faces up to 10 years in prison and the possibility of a life sentence. According to plea records, Jennifer and Kiara had known each other since they were teenagers. When Jennifer married Kiara's child's father in March 2015, Kiara took part in the bachelorette party in Eastern Shore, Maryland. The four-page plea agreement went on to say that Jennifer and an unnamed conspirator began supplying smack to a second conspirator she met at the bachelorette party, allegedly. Both Jennifer and Kiara would travel to the Eastern Shore several times a week to provide the second person with the smack, the plea said. However, in early May 2015, the friends had a falling out, in part because Kiara had owed Jennifer $20 for a prescription pill, according to the plea. Court records state that Kiara had little cash flow, while Jennifer would bring in large sums of cash from her alleged business activities. On May 12th, an alleged partner of Jennifer's was arrested. In an attempt to raise bail money, Jennifer asked Andre and another individual to help sell the smack she was holding. Prosecutors say that Andre allegedly saw an opportunity. A couple weeks later, Andre told Kiara he was planning on hitting and taking off Jennifer, according to court documents. Records went on to say Andre not only confirmed his plans with Kiara, but also planned to harm her son if he was present at the time of the holdup. Kiara allegedly offered to get Andre the tool to use to carry out his plan. Kiara contacted a relative in prison to help her get the blicky and promised a portion of smack in return for their efforts, allegedly. Court records say that the night before the hits, Andre spent the night at Jennifer's home and knew that her son would be there. Jennifer's son was not feeling well and stayed home from school that morning. Prosecutors say then Andre left and went to Kiara's house to retrieve the 45 and went back to Jennifer's house. The alleged trigger man then returned to Kiara's house with the blicky and the smack court records say. Allegedly, when Kiara asked Andre what happened, he went into detail and told her where he left the bodies laying. They weren't found until the next day. By that time, according to court records, Andre had given back the blicky, weighed the smack, and that was determined to be worth $8,000. He gave Kiara's relative inmate their cut, and Kiara got her cut and sold it for pocket money, according to the plea. Court records show that Kiara first met the BPD detectives in May 2015 and later with ATF in February 2020. She also met with federal law enforcement agencies in July 2020. She testified in front of a grand jury in July 2020 as well, months before Andre was charged and arrested. Her police says she was not fully truthful in those meetings. Family members of Jennifer had repeatedly disputed that she was involved in any illegal dealings. Her brother said that Jennifer knew people involved in that lifestyle and she was enamored with the fast life but disputed that his sister had any involvement in that life. Her family made sure to point out her positive impact on her son's life and who she was as a woman and mother. Andre's attorney told the Baltimore Sun that his client disputes his involvement in the slayings and says he was in Eastern Shore at the time police believe the incident took place. Andre is scheduled for a three-week jury trial in May 2022. Rest in peace to Jennifer and her baby boy. My condolences and sincerest prayers to the family. 
I hope the guilty plea has brought them some closure. I know they still have to go through the trial of the other co-defendants, so unfortunately the journey for closure goes on for now. I pray that this holiday season they can find peace and joy for and with each other. I'm sure Jennifer would have never thought that someone she called her friend was behind her untimely departure and that of her son. Watch those close to you. They may not always have the best intentions. Jealousy runs deep. All right, fam, that's it for this episode of The Baltimore Way. Thank you all for watching. Shout out to all those who made it to the end. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This is your girl, Mrs. Tony Two Times, and I'm out.